Our ninth early stage company, Tape Deck, out of Tigard, Oregon, a mobile app that connects people online through conversation. Tape Deck, come on up to the stage. By raise of hands, who knows somebody that's used a dating app before? Okay. And keep them raised if you've ever heard them complain about them. Right? So my first experience with dating apps came when I was living in Europe. I was 23, single, and I moved halfway around the world. So I jumped on these apps with the honest intent to meet people. I spent months. I picked out my best photos, started playing the game, swipe right, swipe left. I'm sure you've seen or heard. And I just got exhausted. Months go by, and I still haven't gone on a single date. And I said, you know what? There deserves to be a better tool. So I set out to solve my own problem, and I founded Tape Deck. Tape Deck is an audio social app that connects people through conversation. So how does it work? It's a completely different experience. Every day, we release a new prompt. And to participate in the prompt, you record an audio message. So for example, what's your favorite food in town? The response for me might be, I grew up in Bend, Oregon, and I love going to the Silver Moon. They got great beers on tap. <laughs> <laughs> if you're interested, you don't swipe right on a picture. You get to hear what they have to say. And you tap a button, and you send them a message back. They get to hear you speak. So put simply, you just start talking. So we actually built this product, and we launched it at Oregon State in a closed beta last spring. We did a six-week test, only available to the students. Said, what the heck, let's see how it goes. And the data was very strong. I'm sure you've heard of Hinge. In that period of time, we almost matched them in users on campus. Um, produced several meaningful matches. I had a lot of wonderful interviews with people who actually went on dates on the platform. So where are we at now? Since then, we've iterated on the product, worked out some bugs, and actually tomorrow, I launch back at Oregon State, and this fall, we're doing a, a five-university campus launch uh, before the end of the year. Um, where are we at? Um, we are, I don't know, how do we make money in this space? I think that's an important question. Um, through subscriptions, um, we will have, the app will be free to download, and then you can buy a $10 a month paid subscription, and that will give you additional filters. Love is blind mode. Pictures start blurry, you have to listen first. Additional search filters, so you can have a more tailored approach on the platform. Um, you can be shown first, priority viewing, and additional things of that nature. It will start out around $10 a month, and this plan will be available this winter. Um, and it's a very proven business model. Tinder has monetized this. They generate more revenue than most apps in the App Store today. They're in the top five. Uh, we are raising $300,000 in a convertible note round. We've already secured $70,000. We're not talking about that. Oh, we're not allowed to talk about that. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have some commitments already, uh, to say the least. Um, sorry, I didn't get that signal. Um, we're excited to take this to the next level. As I mentioned, Oregon State starts tomorrow. Um, and, you know, believe it or not, half of relationships today start online. So if you put me through, I'll prove to you with data in the next month before the conference just how powerful this tool can be. Thank you. This is so cool. Okay, Blake, because I am 1,000 years old and married to someone from high school, um, and before the, to see more about this business, like what are we talking about in terms of revenue numbers? And, and how, how much does it cost for you to attract someone new to the, to the app, right? Because you, you, know, you don't have users unless people download the app. That's a great question. Uh, Tinder, case example, they generated $2 billion in revenue last year. You said billion with a B. Billion with a B. In one year. In one year. Yep. Bumble and everybody hates public... it. And everybody hates it. And everybody yeah. hates it, right? <laughs> you can solve that. I mean, it works for some people. <laughs> it works for some people. But there's plenty of people that complain about it. Plenty of people that complain about it, yeah. Yes, so your second question, um, acquisition cost. Um, I actually had a wonderful conversation with the VP of engineering of Instagram two weeks ago, and she was telling me that their acquisition cost in LA was like $70 per user, and I just thought that was absurd. I thought that was absurd because from our test at Corvallis, we had like 20 different tactics to acquire users. You know, partner with clubs on campus, put a table up, 
pass out flyers. You know, we had a, a lot of different learnings from that time there, and we, we generated 10 tactics in that period of time that can acquire a user for under $5. So just for comparison's sake, that's kind of the ballpark we're working with for the next three months. Yeah. How did you come up with the name? Tape deck. I'm sure there's some of you in this room that know what a tape deck is. <laughs> It used to, Do it's a you machine what a you use <laughs> to record and play back audio. You yeah, put yeah. a cassette tape in there, yeah. right? So, and that's exactly what you do on the app. You record an audio message, and you get to play it back. It's so interesting because it seems like the rise of audio message is like, it is here. So I love this. And did I see a hand over here? Yes. What's defensible about this? What keeps Tinder from... That's a great Adding question. Audio. Gotcha, gotcha. That's a great question. So I got two things in response to that. One, you don't necessarily have to beat the competition. The average user has four dating apps installed at one time. So you just have to be competitive. And second, you ask most people that are familiar with what Tinder is, and they will say it's a hookup app. So even if you integrate audio, it's going to be a hookup app with audio. We're trying to be something more authentic to that. And I think that resonates with a lot of people. Yes. Do, do women feel safe on your app, and do you have data on that? I think they do. From the interviews I had in Corvallis, they said getting to hear someone speak before I have to go up in person and meet them for the first time is a much stronger signal than you know, just a picture on these other platforms. So I think that goes a long way in terms of providing safety. And over time, we will build in additional mechanisms to do the, more than that as well. Okay, I think that that's our time. Thank you well, so thank much. Thank you very this much. This is awesome.